Wonderland. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard for Mushroom Wonderland. If you're new to this channel, I talk a lot about wild mushrooms, mainly about mushrooms that you could find for yourself out in the forest. And so if you like that kind of content, you better subscribe to this channel, hit that thumbs up button, um, leave a comment, a positive comment, you know, so I know where you are and I know what you're looking for and I know what you're finding out in your neck of the woods. Right now I'm mountain biking. That's why I wear a helmet. Don't wear the helmet all the time, just mainly when I'm on the bike. But I'm out here in a county park uh, in the Puget Sound, so on the Kitsap Peninsula, just about uh, an hour from Seattle, any way you cut it. Um, I'm in a county park called uh, Banner Forest. So anybody from around here familiar with this area, there's probably some people going to be in the comments like, yeah, hey, you're giving up my spot. You know, whatever. This is like 400 plus acres of uh, just wooded conifer, second growth forest, uh, a lot of underbrush. And it's protected it's just full of all these paths all these trails for mountain bikes for hikers for uh, horseback riders uh, no motorized vehicles anyways uh it's the beginning of september the rains have not came it is like the driest part of the year which is weird because there is no burn ban i just got back from camping labor day weekend with the family and typically there's a burn ban uh, on labor day weekend but this year there wasn't, which I don't know how that's dictated. Be relative moisture in the air or in the atmosphere or something like that. But there's moisture in this forest. So I've been out here mountain biking, ran into a ton of different chanterelles, white chanterelles, gold chanterelles. I'll show you those in a minute. But I came to another place in the forest where I just set my bike down and stepped off into the woods and came across some other mushrooms. So hopefully satiate your mycophilic nerves if you've been fiending for some northwest mushroom activity it's happening right now in the forest so um first I, i'm gonna flip this camera around show you where i'm standing big douglas fir over here we got a bunch of western hemlock and uh and some western red cedar right here you can tell the bark is like very different but i'm not really gonna get into trees right now but these douglas fir trees with the real wide scarring on the bark that um those are good trees for associations with mushrooms like chanterelles so perfect forest for this and i come across this thing laying right down here that looks a bit like somebody took some expanding foam from a construction site and shot it on the forest floor you see that look at the colors on that thing and yeah, cinnamon brown on the edge and kind of yellowish but this is the beginning of a mushroom that I would believe is actually parasitizing this big Douglas fir right here. So this guy is dying from the inside because it's got this fungus. That's known as Phaeolus schwannitii or the dyer's polypore. And as I was checking out this little young one that's starting to grow right here, they always grow off of wood. So I'm about sure that it's growing right off of this trunk of this tree. They're known to be parasitic as well as saprophytic. So they just feed on the dying i mean on the dead trees um, and apparently this one is feeding on the dead tree now i don't know if it's killing the tree or if the tree is dying and this figured it out but i kind of gazed down into this valley and i saw another one a beautiful one so let's go look at the dyer's polypore phaeolus shrinitzii um, when it's young so check this guy out beautiful so i show these in a lot of my videos and they're usually old and so what people do is they use this mushroom for um, dyeing fabrics. So right now it's kind of young. It hasn't dropped spores and stuff. So look, it, it gets uh, like ferns fused into it. Um, it's an interesting thing. These sticks are also fused right through the caps and into the cap. And uh, mushrooms are just weird like that, right? And the mushrooms love in this. So this is a beautiful start to a young dyer's polypore. So this mushroom... Um, eventually could be picked when it turns more of a rusty maroon uh, kind of they're an annual mushroom so this one's gonna die um, and it, once it gets mature and that's really when you want it for uh, dyeing protein fabrics like silk or wool and I don't have any videos really about that yet but I should because it's a whole thing dyeing with mushrooms I know a, a, a gal at mycopigments.com and she does um, she does some workshops on dyeing with mushrooms and this is a popular one makes kind of this green color so um this 
is usually a sign of dead wood or uh, dying wood. So this one, again, attached to the root of one of these big Douglas fir. So maybe there's a couple of them dying. Maybe it's attached to this, to the roots of the same tree. Either way, beautiful mushroom, kind of a cool name. Uh, and uh, yeah, growing real fresh and young out here. And as you can see, I have a pocket that is just full of summer chanterelles. So I've been finding these as I go along and they're just uh, all over the place. I found white ones, I found uh, gold ones. Some of these were white and as they're getting bruised and damaged, they're turning gold. So that's interesting. Um, if you've picked a lot of chanterelles, you've probably seen that characteristic. They are not considered gills like a regular mushroom, but that's the spore bearing surface, the lamellier of the mushroom. And uh, so these are a choice edible mushroom right now. I seriously have my pocket like totally packed with chanterelles. So um, if I come across any more, I'm gonna have to like convert my shirt into a makeshift basket because I just came out for a bike ride. Didn't really expect to be finding like tons of chanterelles growing out here. It's just, it's crazy. It hasn't rained, but they don't care. They do not care. They're just like, here we are, man. We're coming in hot. This is what it looks like when I'm, <laughs> when I'm mushroom hunting. I kind of go deep on some trails that are already blazed and then and then i break away out into the wild you know that's where you're gonna find the best ones is where other people haven't been i've definitely spent more time wandering around in areas without mushrooms than areas with mushrooms but people go how do you know these spots and it's like logging hours man you gotta log forest hours It'll be cool in the fall, I'll put together some live foraging videos. I take you guys out with me when there's a huge abundance of mushrooms in this forest. And we can ID them live, see what's growing out here. All right, I came a little farther down the trail. Something caught my eye over here. So let me show you what these chanterelles look like in the absolute wild, in their habitat. As you're just cruising down the trail, keeping your eyes down, this is what you might see. Let me flip this camera and I'll show you. I see this little guy winking at me from under the moss and the sticks. So uh, let's check out this golden chanterelle. Okay, reenactment. Just cruising along, cruising along. My eyes are always scanning, scanning for unusual colors. Oh, I see something. I see something. Let's come right down in here. If you look down in here, I've seen him. I've seen him peeking at me. Right now, there just isn't too many mushrooms. So if something catches your eyes and it's in the shape of a mushroom, there's a really good chance, let me grab this guy by the base and everything, that you're gonna find yourself a nice chanterelle. This guy is like really dried out. Look, it's even got some trike on it, some green mold starting right there on the edge of the cap. So I guess I'd probably leave this one behind um, this one actually might be a rainbow chanterelle, a cantharellus roseocanus. Um, just judging by how gold these gills are, um, or ridges, whatever you want to call them. But still a beautiful stout mushroom. This guy is a really thick, really, really stout and meaty. Look at how colorful those, those gills are. So I'm going to call this a rainbow chanterelle just due to the really bright colors. And the stature, it's just uh, it really tapers kind of at the bottom. It's just thick and heavy. It's a nice, it's a nice nugget right there. That would really make, um, you know, some good soup or whatever. You can slice that up, cook it and throw it on a steak. But with the green mold, I mean, I'm betting you could probably cut that part away. Look at the inside is like pure white flesh. And it should tear apart a little bit like string cheese or chicken. See that? It really rips apart, so. Anyways, there goes your <laughs> rainbow chanterelle. I meant to take a picture of it before I did that, but I think there's more out here, so. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys what those look like. And look at right down in here, just a little 
little gold little gold head poking out oh let me grab it this this is a young one typical size of a summer chanterelle but good edible right there so i'm gonna put it in my overstuffed pocket going for the record on how many mushrooms can somebody stuff in their pocket and uh, doing pretty good doing pretty good oh there we go see right under there did you see that before i did good job oh look at that one beauty beauty all right i'm gonna show you what's in my pocket i'm going for the record of mushroom pocket one pocket because of this so here you go summer chanterelles man this is the one i just picked look at how clean and fresh that guy is but uh but these ones are getting a little beating in my pocket but they're still so firm they're so firm and stout that uh, they're not getting damaged when they bruise, they kind of turn more gold color. But any more abuse, I'm gonna have to fashion a little basket out of my shirt. It's pretty hot out here. But I'm not, I don't know if I wanna be that dude out here just cruising the trails with my shirt off and like a stick with a mushroom sack tied on it like a hobo back in the 30s riding the rails. A lot of chanterelles in one pocket, yeah? Beat that. Right, right here we're running into some more these kind of caught my eye good example right, right here Ooh, beautiful look at those gorgeous absolutely beautiful golden chanterelles and don't worry people plucking them like this doesn't hurt anything Gorgeous mushrooms. And I look right across the way. Look right here. A big clump of them. Looks like somebody might have kind of stepped on these. But uh, these are already broke. Maybe a horse. But spots like this are just bountiful. See? There's more growing just all around the little area. So. A little bit more here. Yeah, they're just kind of bubbling up out of the out of the ground. Definitely enough for your steak right there. But if I continued to look around in this area, I have no doubt I would encounter some more of these beautiful mushrooms. But it is just crazy. There's just a it hasn't rained in a long time, but somehow these mushrooms are finding enough moisture to do their thing so, very cool I wonder if I can get all those in my pocket now so apparently this is a really good time of year for these guys to be growing too probably the most common mushroom in the Pacific Northwest this is known as, known as a foamy topsis mountier um, named after a mycologist no doubt but uh, this is commonly known as the red belted conch. And it's called that because it's got this belt on it. And there's some red, you know, red belted. So it's got this belt on the outer edge. And it can sort of vary in color, but always combinations of this kind of dark brownish gray, reddish color. And then, uh, you know, it's got this poor surface. This is a young, healthy one. What it's doing is it's eating the wood inside of this little stump right here. And, uh, and it's running through there, eating all of the white cellulose. So this is called a brown rot decayer because it just leaves behind the brown material. It eats all the white uh, materials in here, the cellulose in the tree. It's basically sugars. And this is a good example. I'm gonna actually flip the camera so you can see the mycelium at work inside of this stump. It's chewing away at all the white cellulose. And what it's gonna leave behind is basically um, what looks like little cubicle stacks of reddish brown wood um, 
and it just eats all the sugar and all that just falls apart and turns into soil out here and more mushrooms and trees can grow in it. So uh, check out the inside of this stump real quick. So here you see the fruiting body, right? And it's actually inside the bark. What a cool example. If the tree continued up here, this would still be happening, right? And all of this is mycelium and it's, it's eating, it's running all through all of the cellulose within this wood. And it's just chewing up all it can eat out of here. It's finding it really delicious. The mycelium is all through this wood. So it's actually a really cool example. And then popping out of the side is its reproductive organ. It spits this big, huge fruiting body out here. And this is dropping just spores by the millions and billions out here into the wind. These mushrooms can grow for years. As long as there's fuel inside of this stump, this conch can just keep growing. Whereas like a Ganoderma uh, organensi or the Northwest Rishi only grows one, you know, annually, once a year, and then the fruiting body dies. This one can grow for years, provided that there's enough food in here. So, not really known to be really useful to humans, but it is a uh, very useful one to the forest out here because without them, it would just be a huge, uh, mile tall pile of pickup sticks. These logs would just fall over, they'd never decay. So, we need them for decay. You could see them down here chewing on another part of the same tree. And then here's yet even more of the same tree, completely myceliated. There's a fruiting body about to grow off of it right here. So it's just a mushroom farm right here. But it's Fomitopsis monsiae instead of like oyster mushrooms or whatever you might want to eat. It's the same deal though. Same thing's going on. So you could um, cook this. All of, these, uh, all of these tree conks in the northwest are considered somewhat medicinal. So you could be the judge of that. I'm not not gonna speak to that so much but you could throw that in some water steep it for hours real slow um, into a tea maybe put some some fresh uh, you know uh, Douglas fir tips in there and get that kind of citrusy you know get a forest tea going on for whatever ails you but uh yeah there's a little foamy topsis monsier 101 or the red belted Kong tell your friends all about it look at this tree good example this entire tree has these Little fruiting bodies popping out of the side of it. These are all red belted conchs. All Fomitopsis monsiae. So this tree is dead. These mushrooms are eating everything inside there. This fall, when the wind storms come to western Washington, this tree is a bye-bye. Hey, so we had some pretty cool luck out here today. Kind of just a fun day. I'm having a good time out here. This is a totally unprofessional video, but uh, some of them on my channel are, but this one I'm just out mountain biking, seeing uh, how many mushrooms I can stuff in my pockets. And uh, yeah, just kind of a cool day finding that Dyer's Polypore, chanterelles, talking about uh, about these red belted conks. So um, all kinds of cool mushroom videos coming up. When the rains really start falling here in Washington, we're gonna have so many mushrooms, so much to talk about. And I'm gonna do some live forays this fall where I just walk through the woods and we identify all kinds of mushrooms, whether they're edible or poisonous, common ones that you see on the side of the trail so that you yourself can learn to ID these mushrooms easily and impress your friends and family and safely forage mushrooms to bring home to the dinner table. So make sure you hit that subscribe on Mushroom Wonderland and thanks for joining me. We'll see you on the next video. Much love everyone, peace.